Hi everybody, Rob Mize here, coming to you once again from beautiful Palm Beach, Florida, where today we're going to see how we can use After Effects to customize our text. So if you're ready, let's get started. You see I have a composition here with a text layer already applied. This is 1280 by 720 and it's 30 seconds long. Now I can grab this brick graphic and bring it beneath our text Change that track mat setting to alpha mat, and boom, there we go. We have customized the fill of our text. But let's do a little more with that and highlight our text. Come up here to layer, create mask from text. And After Effects creates an adjustment layer with masks on it that are in the shape of our text. Now, if we go up here with our pen tool, you see we can quickly customize the shape of this text by eliminating, adding, moving a few vertices and change the look rather dramatically of this text. And you can do this with whatever degree of precision you feel like you need to for your project. But for this, let me just leave this where it's at because I think you get the idea. Now, I'm going to duplicate this and bring this down here to use for another example in just a moment. Back here with our adjustment layer, I could take these masks, copy them, and then paste them onto the brick layer. But rather than do that, I'll select that layer, come up here to my brick graphic, hold down Option, and drag that graphic onto the adjustment layer, and you see it replaces the adjustment layer with all the attributes of that layer still in place. So there we have our customized text with uh, custom shape and fill. Now let's go down to this duplicate text that we created and see another way that we can customize that fill. I'm going to use the shatter effect this time. So the first thing I want to do is pre-comp this layer so that the shatter effect works on the shape of the text, not the entire composition itself. I'll show you what I mean. I'll use Command Shift C and call this pre-comp text. Move all attributes into new composition. And there we go. Let me right click the effects panel and under simulation shatter effect. I'll change the view to rendered. Change the shape to custom and change the custom shatter to the PC text to our pre-comp there. Let's also come down here to uh, force and bring that radius to zero so that our text does not shatter over time. Now open up textures and you see that we have layers indicated for front side and back mode. Let's go ahead and change that front layer to brick change the side layer to brick and we might as well do the back layer as well. We could change that to anything that we have down here on our timeline. But having done that, let me open up the camera position and rotate that on the y-axis and you see that we have 3D text there with the front, side, and back customized with our brick fill. And of course we can increase that extrusion depth if we would like. If you're like me and still waiting for After Effects 6, then this is a nice way that you can quickly and easily create uh, 3D text. Now, we can do a lot more with this text than we've done so far. Let me delete these layers and go back to our text. And uh, I'm going to call this Cloud. I'll double click that so I can edit that text and use Command D to duplicate it. This duplicate I just want to use as a temporary reference. So uh, I'll come up here to my cloud layer and again right click in the effects panel, come down to simulation particle world. I'll turn off the grid and let's open up physics and reduce the velocity and gravity of these particles to zero so that our particles are motionless. And let's also change those particles to darkened and faded sphere. 
and you see them right there. So we're going to increase the radius on the x-axis and y-axis so that those particles cover our cloud text, like so. Now let's go up here and bring this birth rate way up so that they completely cover the text. And here is the key to this effect. Come down to Color Map, Change that to origin constant, and boom. Now you have cloud text created in Particle World. And you've got some motion there from the generation of those particles. We can maybe change that transfer mode to screen, bring the max opacity down to about 15%. And uh, you start to see you can do a lot of things with this. I'll bring the velocity up. You see there's a great deal of potential for a variety of effects. Now let's create a camera. And if we rotate around this, we see that that text is created in three dimensions. And we can increase that radius x and y just that easily. I'll bring up this birth rate a bit more. And so there is our cloud text. And this is getting its color from the color of the text itself, in this case, white. Now, if we were to increase this border, you see that the border also begins to, de to generate particles in its blue color. So whether you are using origin constant or origin to death, where you can choose a death color for the particles, or birth to origin, where you can choose a birth color for the particles before they go to their uh, actual text, text color. All these settings will generate particles only from the area that is occupied on that layer. Uh, wherever there is transparency, there will be no particles created. So there is our cloud text. Uh, let's do something a little bit different. We'll grab our, our reference layer that we had and solo that. And I'm going to change this to stone. And let's uh, grab our CC particle world again. And again, bring uh, physics down to zero for velocity and gravity. And this time, change particle to a cube. And once again, let's bring out radius y. And let's bring out radius x. And bring up this birth rate quite a bit. And I think I'm going to reduce the size of this to uh, about 0.15. And a little more on the birth rate. In fact, let's go to here the, to this four second mark and see what we have. I'm going to bring this longevity up to 30 seconds also. Okay, that's a lot of particles right about there, I think. And I'll bring up max opacity to 100% and again change our color map to origin constant. And there is our stone text, but I see some opacity in there that I don't want. So I will go up to Options, Opacity Map, and let's take out this opacity curve that brings in our particles from zero opacity to 100, and then at their death they go back to zero. We'll just bring that straight across so that our particles are at full opacity throughout their life. And let's change this color maybe to more of a gray, something about like that. And there we have some stone text. Now, to keep this text from continuing to move over its life, let me come here to about this four second mark. I think the text looks good there. And I'll add a keyframe to my birth rate. I'll hit U to reveal it and use Option left arrow to move that keyframe one frame earlier in the timeline. Now let's bring birth rate to zero so that our particles stop their production. But we still see some movement there and that's coming from this rotation speed. So I'm going to bring that to zero. And now we have nice solid text there. 
Again, if we rotate around it, we see that we have three-dimensional text in our stone that we've created. I want to leave initial rotation at 360 because if I change that to zero, then there is no rotation on their cubes. They're all uniform and I don't want that look. So I'll undo that and leave that just where it is. And again, if we increase our border, then we have more particles created by that border. So there's a lot you can do here. Um, let me go back to cloud and duplicate that again and solo that layer using option click. And let's make a few changes here. Let's see, I will uh, double click this layer and let's call this soda. And go back to our particle settings for this layer. Change this to bubble and let's see, bring this birth rate down quite a bit. Let's bring it down to about 50. And also bring down our uh, birth size to, uh, let's see, about um, uh, 0 0.15, 0 0.15 on death size. Uh, bring up our max opacity a little bit. And open up physics and put just a bit of negative gravity there. And now we have soda bubbles but we're really not seeing our text that clearly. We need those bubbles to stay in place for a period of time before they become subject to gravity. So let's go up here to our option settings again, and this time let's go into rendering, and you see this other settings delay particle release. I'm gonna change this to 10% of longevity. Okay, now let's change longevity to 30 seconds and 10% of that is 3. So these bubbles are going to stay in place for 3 seconds before they become subject to gravity and are pulled upward. Maybe make that kind of a uh, cola color there. And uh, let's change that to the add mode. We we'll see those a little better. Bring up our opacity and uh, there we go. We've got something going there. When you consider the number of shapes that you have available and you consider the physics animations and colors and other elements, you really begin to appreciate the fact that you have virtually an infinite number of customizations that you can apply to your text. But uh, you are not limited to simply these particle types that we've seen so far. So let me bring in this particle layer that I have and open it. This is a pre-comp and you see that I have a jelly bean here and this is just a shape on a small composition. This is 200 by 200. I find these smaller compositions tend to work better with these custom shapes because they tend to render faster. So I have this jelly bean shape uh, and I have a gradient that I've applied to it just to give it a kind of a highlight and some shading there. And I've also applied this tint effect. And if we take a look here, you can see that I have some keyframes to change the color of this jelly bean over its life. And I've also added an expression here using the expression language menu. I've come down here to property and use the loop out duration expression so that this color change continues over the life of these particles. So back here in our custom text layer, let's change this particle type to textured disk and change our texture layer to our particles and bring up our size to, uh, let's try about a 0.2 on birth and death size, and change our texture time to birth so that the particles take on the color of their birth and maintain that over their life. Let's come over here and change the color of our text back to white so that it does not tint the color of our jelly beans. And there we go, we've got some jelly bean text. In fact, we've got jelly j bean text. There we go. So uh, there is our jelly bean text. 
Of course, you can do all kinds of things with this. Let me show you uh, a few other things that I had worked out. On this autumn layer, my particles come from this leaves precomp. If we were using trap code particular, we could make adjustments so that the leaves are generated randomly. But with particle world, we don't have that option. So I've added transparency keyframes so that the visibility of each leaf changes with each frame on the timeline. I've continued the transparency rotation throughout the duration of the composition with the same loop expression that we used for our jelly bean color rotation. So back here on our autumn layer, I've reduced radius x and animated position x from left to right so that the leaves are created from the left to the right. I've also changed physics animation to cone axis, velocity to 2, cranked up the inherit velocity to 337, and the extra setting to minus 2. Down here, we're still using textured disk, and our textured layer is our leaves precomp. Now, I've added an expression here to position y that reads wiggle parentheses 3 comma 0 0.03 close parentheses. And I'm going to use that to add some turbulence to these leaves when we blow them away. And we'll do that using the same delay particle release that we used with our soda bubbles. So as our leaves are formed, when we hit the three second mark, they become subject to our animation and they are blown off left to right in the order that they were created. By the way, these particle animations can be really useful in creating transitions also. And if you will indulge me in just a bit of self-promotion, let me mention the Create Custom Transitions tutorial that I posted a while back that covers this particular technique. In addition, you can apply other effects and filters in combination to get some really interesting looks and movement to your text. I'll include these examples in the project files of this tutorial. So, my final word on this tutorial is experiment, play around, and have fun. Once again, I encourage you to keep in touch, although not by texting. This is about the closest thing to texting that I do. Uh, and I'm always interested in your suggestions, your ideas, and your work. So until next time, this is Rob Mize, wishing you happy texting. Oh, and as always, happy compositing.